Dunuk's intricate lore should be a hint that it also holds many secrets. Secrets that stay in the game's world, and others that bleed into our own. I wanted to highlight some of these secrets that the community has discovered in the months since its release, and some of these may surprise you. These secrets will be split into two parts, because of how long they turned out to be. Part 2 will be coming out two weeks from now. So before we jump into the secrets, I need to start with an honorable mention that made the discovery of many of these secrets possible. Trunic. Trunic is the language found throughout the game that can be translated and allows players to read most of the text found in the game. Despite the amazing feat of creating a completely new written language for a game, it cannot be considered a secret since it's part of the main game. If you are interested, I will be going into how to translate Trunic in a future video, so make sure you're subscribed, you don't want to miss it. However, Trunic is not the only secret language in the game, but we will talk about that later. The first secret begins with something we look at and mostly ignore in almost every game. The status bars. In Tunic, the bars mechanically represent health, stamina, and magic. But that is not what they represent in the game's world. Stamina is the one that represents something we are familiar with, vigor. That is not the case with the remaining two. Magic represents one soul. The manual states, Some items use the power of your soul. Magic points refill when you rest. But there are a finite number of souls in the world. Throughout your adventures, magic is collected by killing enemies. It is interesting to notice which enemies provide the most and the least amount of magic. Lastly, we have the health bar which represents will. By defining it as will, it reveals some interesting aspects about the world. For example, the crystals and cavities that drain your will, but never extinguish it. The manual describes the cavities as exposed fossil that has dented a patch of local truth out of the canonical plane. Being near it does not hurt, but does instill a terrible feeling of hopelessness. Given that it's reducing your health bar, yet it does not hurt, it could be suggested that when you get hit, you are simply losing the will to live. Players who lose all hope and give up on the game are also destined to become part of it. Tunic's lore accounts for the people who never finished their journeys in the game, and the souls of their foxes are forever lost in the cemetery that is the swamp. These lost souls become what is called Lost Echoes, described as an echo of self from a past ruin seeker whose owner gave up. The echo of self is what the soul you leave behind when you die is called, similar to the From Software games. Another curious fact is that Ruin Seekers are considered to have owners. This could point us towards interesting theories as to what Ruin Seekers truly are. Lost Echoes are not the only ones to have been left behind, however. The developers left quite a few things behind from before the game's release, some intentional and some not. This one was confirmed to be intentional by the development team, and it is what the community has come to call the dev world. This is how the overworld of the game used to look like before the game's release. It has a very curious way of being entered as well. The developers of Tunic left many techniques and strategies for players who speedrun, enjoy poking around, or finding unusual things. If you would like to learn what you have to do to enter the dev world, I would recommend Jess Achilles' instructional video on how to do so. It is quite easy to follow. In the dev world, there are prototype models of enemies we see in the game, 
like the rootlings. Enemies we have never seen before, like a wolf, a knight, and a sand crystal creature that I suspect was the early version of the Slorms. Another thing that can be found is an early save point in the form of a bonfire, reminiscent of its Dark Souls counterpart. As you may have noticed, the art style followed a more geometric design during development in comparison to how it looked in the final game. However, one of the most interesting things left behind in the dev world is a mural with Trunic written on it. From top to bottom it says, Explore at the top, Reason, Power, and Grace in the three hexagons, and then the word Triumvirate below. There are many theories about the words reason, power, and grace. Some believe they represent the initials of the RGB colors, despite P from power not really corresponding to B from blue. Others believe the initials may correspond to the words role-playing game. And finally, some believe they were the original concepts each of the questagons represented. We are unsure if these words represent scrapped meanings, or if these are to be included in the final interpretation of the concepts presented in Tunic. Either way, the dev world gives us a lot of insight into the game's development and evolution. Our next secret can be found in the library. In this place, the aptly named character, the Librarian, researches the meaning of everything that surrounds him, from the Golden Cross to the Void Touched. One thing you might not have noticed is that on his chalkboards, there is text written not only in Trunic, but also in English, which is very unusual for any of the creatures inside of the game's world. There are a total of six chalkboards with unique information. The first of these chalkboards include images and information on the administrators, accompanied by a small picture of coffee and the word admin in Trunic. A chalkboard with auto bolts, which are the turrets, is also present and it shows them in their active forms as well as their destroyed forms, accompanied by Trunic describing each of them. The destroyed form is accompanied by the word fork due to its similar appearance to a tuning fork, and the active form is accompanied by the word turret. The third chalkboard displays the Void Touched, which is the official name for the corrupted foxes from my previous video, in their sarcophagus, as well as a sarcophagus connected to a teleportation pad. The English text on this board is currently believed to say uses power to activate the dais, which accurately describes how the golden pads are powered. However, it is hard to interpret what these say due to their handwriting. The fourth and most mysterious is a chalkboard with a game cartridge. The trunic on this chalkboard translates to the universe on the top right, and the word how repeated many times on the lower left. This is unusual since a character within the game has the knowledge that they might be in a game. In regards to the English that appears on this board, we do not have a good understanding of what all of the words may be. We can make out certain words like I will in the second line, and possibly this is maze in the third, but we are not sure of what it says as a whole. If you have theories on this and other things throughout the world of Tunic, please join the Tunic Lore Discord that Jess Achille and I created together. We would love to hear your thoughts. The link is in the description below. The two remaining chalkboards were not used in the game, but are included in the same file as the previous four. The first unused chalkboard shows the three questagons and the locations the librarian believes them to be in. On the right side, it says Siege Engine beside the first questagon, and possibly below beside the third. On the lower left, the current translation is need all three hexagons to, which would make sense given the purpose of the questagons and the diagram of the shadow oubliette above it. 
The second unused chalkboard depicts the void touched again in a sarcophagus, but this time in a more comfortable praying position. It is accompanied by text beside it, which is currently interpreted to be Tankfu's contents, stays praying, genetic singularity, and tomb. This information has helped us better understand how the void touched function and their possible purpose. Thank you for watching. This is just the end of part one of this video. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe so you're notified the moment the second part comes out in two weeks. As always, thank you to the Tuna community for making these videos possible at all. If you're interested in what games I will be making videos on next, check out my stream on Twitch. I stream every Wednesday through Sunday at 8pm EST. I would love to see some of you there. But for now, that will be it. I'll see you next time.